Hi, welcome to this quick video about Bitfold. This is not uh, an, a well thought out uh, playthrough. I will not methodically go through all the inputs, outputs and knobs of uh, Bitfold. I first want to explain what's happening on the scope. Uh, in a few minutes I will um, well disable the blue line, but for now this is just showing what I'm sending into the input on Bitfold. And as you can see right now, this is just a sine wave uh, coming from three body. The green line is uh, what's coming out of, or is the signal coming out of uh, the saw output. There is no actual saw wave uh, circuit or oscillator in Bitfold but it kind of has the tendency to make saw-like shapes from most things that you send in. At least if you're staying uh, with um, well, regular waves. And then the red line, uh, which is well amplified on screen here, but it has the same ranges as the other audio uh, outputs. This red line is the stepped wave output here on the bottom. Right now everything is turned down, and by everything I mean the knobs. What those are for is, well, whatever you send into the input uh, has a gain knob, and this is the gain knob for that. So if you turn up the gain knob, you will see and hear that we have a signal coming through. And then we have a CV knob and a CV input. This is just an additional volume control that you can CV control. And this just adds to whatever you have set here with the gain knob. So these are essentially just two gain controls. And what's happening inside Bitfold, you send in a wave and then there's uh, several comparators inside the circuitry that detect whenever the voltage uh, exceeds a certain level and then it spits out uh, well kind of a pulse wave but it's a bit and as you increase the gain more and more or higher and higher levels comparators are being uh, triggered and when all of these well pulses or bits are combined back together we get the stepped output wave so what the stepped output wave is is um, an analog representation of the kind of binary computation inside. I realize I'm not making a lot of sense. Let's just add some gain here. You will see that the first stage of the binary conversion is being triggered and we kind of get a two-bit representation of our sine wave and then when I increase the gain we get more and more stages and eventually it will start looking more and more like the sine wave we started off with, just the stepped version. Once again I've uh, amplified the, well, the display for the stepped uh, output so we can see a little bit better later on uh, what's going on with the wave folding stuff inside Bitfold. Let's try making some weird shape here. Oh, this works as well. So now there's a weird shape coming out of three body and you can see that the stepped output in Bitfold just kind of is a crude representation of what we are sending in. And this, the amount of, well, bits kind of um, depends on the gain setting here. There's two times uh, gain uh, on tap here. I won't go any further for now because then well, we're just losing part of the wave here on the display. But we can get well, really blocky, really gnarly, hard clipped, uh, cool distorted sounds. As we would expect uh, from a module by schlappy engineering and let's now uh, 
figure out what the saw output is doing and how this is uh, described as wave folding. So when the gain is at zero, nothing is going through. But then we get this. When the gain is at this level, we can just see this uh, well, square wave coming from the stepped output. So just one comparator circuit is being uh, is active. And whenever we hit one of the comparators inside the circuitry, the original waveform is getting reset, but then it just continues its slope. So we're not really doing a lot to this sine wave. So the blue sine wave is the original and the green one is coming out of the saw output on pitfall. They're not that different, it's just they get reset it and then, well, the remainder of the slope is allowed to pass. There's also some amplification going on. And, well, I'm saying reset it, but that's not really it. There's some um, subtraction going on uh, between the original wave and the stepped output, which causes certain parts of the wave uh, to seem to be reset it. And then there's some amplification to get, uh, well, normal levels again. And this ends up in this uh, well, jagged uh, wave. And the more bits we get, like here you can see, the more the bits, the more bits we get, the more jagged the wave starts to appear. Let's disengage the original wave here. So you can see that at every point where there's a step in the stepped wave, there's kind of a reset happening um, on the saw wave output. And this creates these interesting faults that sometimes sound like hard sync. Well, as soon as you start modulating stuff, it doesn't sound out like a sync at all. So let me quickly experiment a little bit with that. So when we turn down the gain, by the way, and we add the CV knob, there's nothing happening, but the saw output is normalized to this, uh, to this knob and to this input when nothing is patched up. So you kind of get an interesting feedback situation that really mangles our sine wave. Well, but as soon as you patch something in there, for now let's take an envelope. Now this envelope will just uh, well, increase the gain and then you can see whenever the gain is increased we get more faults. Of course you can go into audio rates with uh, this, let's use a sine wave from 3 body. I think you'll agree, it sounds absolutely gnarly. And you can send in hot signals, because you have this attenuator, which is very useful. Let's change the frequency of the modulator.
so that's really cool. Then there's uh, still this inject input. The inject input is essentially just a second audio input or well, signal input. You can send it anything you want without an attenuator. So I'm going to use an attenuated wave coming from well, a module by Geranolog here. It lets me attenuate a sine wave on the module itself. So that's what's happening now. I'm sending in a sine wave that's heavily attenuated into the inject input. Let me change this up here because it's blocking the view. And you can see we get this kind of face shifting uh, behavior. is also really cool and then if we add the CV knob when nothing is patched we have this feedback from the saw wave output back into the modulator for the gain And I find this really cool because we're just uh, playing around with two sine waves. Really nice. Oh, there we're flipping data again. For those of you wondering, we can listen to these bit outputs. These follow the same behavior as everything else, but well, of course these are just square waves, or pulse waves, or rather. And at this point, they well, three of them sound really similar. The bottom one sounds a little bit harsher, harsher. But there's always interesting things to be discovered there. So let's maybe add back in the envelope to the CV input. Listen to the saw wave output again. If you turn down the gain completely, this almost behaves like a crude VCA. Maybe let's send the envelope to the inject input. It might turn out completely nasty. It does. Okay, let's remove this. Let's use the sine wave from 3body again to modulate the gain. Let's play around with the frequency. And of course you can just instead start feedback patching. Let's add the attenuated sine wave to the inject input again. Let's play around with the frequency of that. Really low. And let's add some phase modulation on our source wave.
So that's going to be it. This is all that I wanted to show you. And thanks, by the way, to the people at Schlappy Engineering for sending this unit over. This is a really, really unique take on the wave folding concept. Interesting circuitry with well, limitless sonic possibility. People, if you have a wave folder at home, always, always modulate it at all your rates. That's always, always a source for awesome sounds. Thanks for watching. Bye.